Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to a special edition of In the Sulky, 16-time Meadowlands driving champion John Campbell, who is just less than three million away from 300 million career. I know you don't like to look at goals and accomplishments, but that's a staggering number, my friend. I guess it just means that I've been at it a long time, I think, Sam. A lot of experience. There you go. John, it's your time of year. It's the Grand Circuit time. The uh, stakes colts are coming out. That's where you always excel. But the schedule you guys keep is amazing. Like last week, Friday in Ontario at Mohawk Free Limbs. Baby races back here Saturday morning. Back to Canada Saturday night. Tioga Sunday afternoon. Pocono Sunday night. How do you guys do it? Well, for me, uh, it, it's not as tough as you think. It was a busy weekend. And there will only be a couple weekends out of the year that you would be that busy. Um, you know, for the other guys, they're racing every day. I was I was off Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday before that, and I'm off Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday this past week. So I had time to rest up afterwards, and uh, you know, it was a little hectic, but uh, you know, it's it's not something you're doing all the time, so uh, it, it's not that big a deal. And I guess if you're winning races and driving good horses, it makes it that much more fun too. Well, with the two-year-olds, you have to try the two-year-olds because you don't know where the next good one's coming from. So you hate to miss baby races anywhere just in case it's that one colt that can jump up and do something in the future. John, a lot of people don't know this, but you're heavily involved in the industry in a lot of other ways besides driving. You're a director of the Hamiltonian Society, Little Brown Jug Society, and president of the Grand Circuit. I can remember when I was growing up by Wolverine Raceway in Hazel Park in Michigan, the matron stakes at Wolverine, the Tompkins gears at Hazel, the spotlights on the post parades, the best horses and drivers. It was almost a magical experience. Yeah, that, that's the way the Grand Circuit was at, at that time. It, it used to be a traveling show. It would go from one track to the other, and you know, people each track couldn't wait to see the big stables and big drivers and the, and the top horses come in. Uh, we we ramp, revamped the Grand Circuit uh, just because it, it's changed so much. We don't have that traveling road show so much anymore. And, uh, and so Grand Circuit races are, are designated differently. There's more of them. But we, th we think we get more exposure and we think, uh, it, you know, it's something that tracks can build on as from a publicity standpoint when they're uh, promoting a Grand Circuit race. And one of the cool things that we're going to do again this year is the $100,000 Grand Circuit Challenge. And it's pretty easy. You only have to pick the winners of, what, 18 races or something like that to win the money? Well, yeah, and that's something that we're really excited about. It's going to showcase our Grand Circuit races, which is, I think, one of the most important parts of our uh, industry is the Grand Circuit. Uh, that's what people aspire to race in the horses drivers uh, owners and trainers that they want to be in these kind of races so for the fans to be able to bet on these and pick winners we're hoping that uh, they'll, they'll develop a following and follow the grand circuit uh, throughout the whole year even after the challenge is over and the challenge starts on hamiltonian day here at the meadowlands find out more on the harness racing fan zone.com you can get signed up and get in on the action now you've been driving some very promising and talented hamiltonian prospects already this year qualified a couple for the good times let's start out with tony soprano for bob mcintosh an ontario star last year this was his first start of the year made a nice middle move i thought tired a little bit late what do you think of him up there well it, it was his first start I, I thought he was going to finish it off a little better in the last turn he, he didn't scope just as well as uh, bob would have liked after the race there was a little sickness so he's been working on that um but then again we still have to remember it was his first start i think he's going to build on that he was a colt that he won the final of the Sire Stakes in Ontario. We thought he, he could hit the board in the Breeders' Crown. Unfortunately, he made a break. But I think he's got the potential to be, make the step up and race uh, and be a Hamiltonian horse. Did he suit you gate-wise and rigging-wise and everything else, or will you make some adjustments? Well, we're making adjustments. It's always an adjustment with these horses because they change from week to week, and you might have them great geared up just the way you want one week, and something starts bothering them a little bit on the other side. So it, it's a constant adjustment. Now, how about bar hopping? He was in the other elimination. This is a tactical colt. You've qualified him from day one this year. Kind of a project last year. Um, race pretty good up there. I kind of thought that Dason, who was on the lead, kind of fishtailed in the stretch. You were thinking about going inside and coming out. Did that kind of check your momentum? I did have to check him, but I, I wasn't going to win the race anyway. And he's another colt that he scoped a little bit sick after the race as well, as good as he raced. And he, he does have uh, tremendous potential uh, bar hopping. He's got uh, big time ability. Um, and he, he just has to push it to the next level to be, be a horse that could be a contender in the Hamiltonian. Now, it's a shame to have to pick between two Colts like this in mid-June, but you had to make the decision. You went with Tony Soprano despite post-10. What went into your thinking? Well, Bob's been, Bob McIntosh has been very uh, good to me. Uh, you know, the last few years I've driven a lot of his horses, and uh, the horses were close. I think if bar hopping had won his elimination, I would have gone with him, but 
the fact that they were they were pretty close going in the post position you really can't base your pick on that because it's just one race you're going forward for the rest of the year so uh, I end up staying with Bob's horse well I hope you think that Tony Soprano can win because I had to do some handicapping for the Mohawk program he's my long shot of the night so does he have a shot in there yeah he definitely has a shot in there we need a little break getting out of the gate uh, you know but you know but he's he does have enough ability that if things went his way he could upset one cool horse that you drove a couple years ago here for Jimmy Tanter was Nuncio, the runner-up in the Hamiltonian, just won the elite lap uh, over in Sweden a month ago, and you actually were asked to go drive, but you couldn't go because your youngest daughter was getting married, but you told him in 2017, you're out of daughters, you could go again, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, that ship might have sailed with him <laughs> winning, though, but uh, he's just a great horse. He, you know, he was so consistent here. He's he started out early as a two-year-old and was never worse than third in two years of racing at the highest level. And, uh, you know, he went some very di hard and difficult trips. And, and that's just hard to do to stay in the top three for uh, two years at the level he was doing it. So I'm not surprised that he, he, that he's done this well because he even as good as he raced, he was a little immature physically. And he's just that type of horse that's going to get bigger and stronger and uh I expect if he stays sound, he'll be even better next year. Do you see him coming over for, like, the Cashman on Hambo Day or the Breeders' Crown? Have they talked to you about that? No, there's been no mention of that. I I would be surprised if he doesn't show up back here in the United States sometime, but I, I haven't had any discussions with. But I, I wouldn't be surprised they bring him back for a Breeders' Crown or, or something in the future. All right. Those of you out there in simulcast land, sharpen your pencils. We're going through John's drive tonight to get some insight. Third race, number six, Jules and Hawk. Nice mare. Made a break last time out in the stretch. What happened? Well, she was a little bumpy, and I was just trying too hard to win, and I, I just asked her a little bit too hard. Uh, I, she's a really nice mare, and I think she fits up well in that field. And um, I, I think she's got a future racing against the mares here the rest of this year and next year. Only six horses. Short field helper or hurt her? Well, it doesn't hurt her. She can race either way. Um, she's she's maybe a little bit better off cover, but she she's fine on the front too. So it's it's one of those things you just have to see how many are going out of the gate. And but uh, she'll she'll do it any way you want to do it. Fourth race, number four, Glad all over. Her first races ever were in the New Jersey Sire Stakes. So you were able to get her some experience and still make about eleven or twelve thousand. That's a pretty good deal. Yeah, it's kind of unfortunate she had to start out that way, but she does have ability and she's getting better. She had. Quite a lot of trot uh, from the 10 hole last week, just uh, traffic and took her a while to get into the race. But down at the wire, she was trotting as much as anybody. Short field is going to help her. Moving on to the sixth race, number three, Gwenny J and the Mayor's Open. Flat out killer field. This is a tremendous field. Any, any horse can win this race, including yours. We've seen her grind first over all day long. Yeah, she's she's just a professional mare. She's maybe just a notch below the top free for all mares, but uh, she, her last race uh, she wasn't herself. She had a physical problem that uh, propped up, and uh, but other than that, she goes her race every time. And if, if it works out, like if she could ever pop off second, pop out second over of uh, some fractions that were uh, decent, you know, she she could be a factor in there. Moving on to the seventh race, number five, you rock my world. Now, I've never seen this horse hit a trot in the post parade, but he's been racing great. This is your first time driving him. Yeah, he, he can go. I, I, I think, uh, you know, he gets out of the gate good. He's going to be forwardly placed. I, I think he fits well in that field. Moving on to the eighth race, number six, she's a real deal. Second in the Breeders' Crown last year. But seven weeks between qualifiers, obviously something must have gone wrong. Yeah, she had a little blood issue that uh, Ross couldn't get corrected, and he th thinks he has her now. Um, she showed tremendous ability. She really disappointed with breaks in her last two races last year because she uh, would have been a factor in both those races, I believe. Um, tonight, you know, you have to be a little conservative, but she's the type of filly that off a of cover, and she did this in the Breeders' Crown. She came from a long way back to be second. Uh, you know, she'd need some help with fractions and trip, but, uh, you know, I, you have to race her a little bit conservatively. She's racing older mares, and it's her first start. Moving on to the 10th race, number nine, Draz Mataz. You did qualify this horse this spring. Kind of a wide open field, too. It is a wide open field. He's a little better than people think, too. Uh, you know, he qualified okay. Uh, I know Francisco was very high on him training back, and uh, he went right down to Chester and, and beat a decent field down there. Outside post doesn't help, but he, he's, I guess he could be one of your long shot plays of the night, Sam. Last question for you. Uh, you've been busy driving, but how's your golf game? You still getting out on the links? Uh, yeah, I get to play a little bit. Played yesterday, and uh, yeah, it's it's not as good as I'd like, but it never is. But it's been worse by times. Now, you haven't played with Michael Jordan recently, have you? No, I haven't seen Michael for quite a while. All right. Well, John Campbell, thanks for joining us. Best of luck tonight. Best of luck tomorrow in the good times and all summer long in the Grand Circuit. Thanks for joining us. Thanks a lot, Sam. My pleasure. Hollywood Hayden coming up next. Stay tuned.